Hey everyone, thought we'd take a look at another TCEC Season 19 game. This time we're going to take a look at the Leela Chess Zero versus Scorpion game. So in this game, Leela was playing white, Scorpion had the black pieces, and the opening moves were as follows. It went d4, g6, e4, and bishop g7. So we're into a modern, uh, knight c3, c6, knight to f3, and then d6, bishop to e3, knight to d7, followed by bishop to d3, knight to f6, both sides castling, queen went to d2, and b5. And this is the end of the book moves, um, with quite an interesting position. Now, I actually played a lot as black, and usually, typically, a lot of players would play d5 here, but this allows black to play b4, followed by c5. So black actually gets quite a nice position. But Leo actually plays quite a correct move here, just playing h3, stops the knights, jumping in to g5 and harassing this bishop on e3. Scorpion continued with bishop to b7, and Leela attacks now with e5, hitting the knight. And uh, it's quite interesting if black actually took here, because then white can recapture. And then b4 would come, hitting the knight on c3. Once the knight moves, this leaves space for the knight to jump in to d5. Um, and play could continue, let's say, a3, knight takes bishop, queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, and e6. And we're into quite an equal position. So that's what would happen if, for instance, d takes e5 was played. But in the game, Scorpion just maneuvered the knight backwards, and Leela captured on d6, and the knight is allowed to recapture. But this now opens the e-file, and Leela places their rook on e1, and... Scorpion just solidifies their structure with a6. However, a downfall to this sort of structure is you don't really want to place your bishop on b7 because it's got nowhere to go. It's pretty much trapped here. Um, unless you can get c5 in here, it's actually this bishop is pretty much dead. So you have to say white has a good advantage already. Leela plays a4, just uh, gaining some space on the queen side. There was rook e8, and Leela played knight to e4. There was a trade with bishop takes e4, and then the knight came in to b6, attacking uh, the a4 pawn. Now, I think if um, white takes on b5 with a takes b5, black actually has an intermezzo move here with knight c4. You can hit the queen, and once the queen retreats to c3, um, black can just play a takes b5, and arguably black's actually got an okay position. You'd probably still favour white. Black's position isn't too bad. But after this knight to b6 move, Leela gets inventive. She plays bishop h6, allowing the pawn on a4 to be taken. Scorpion obliges, takes this free pawn, but now Leela takes the bishop on g7, probably the black's best piece to be honest. The king recaptures and now plays knight to e5. So white certainly does have some compensation for the free pawn. But interestingly now, Leela also leaves this b2 pawn free. And Scorpion again eats it up, knight takes b2. All of a sudden black's two pawns up, and you ask the question why Leela has done this. Now I thought maybe white could play rook e to b1 here, hitting the knight. But black's got a crafty move. I thought maybe if rook e to b1, knight to a4 for instance, white could just play rook takes knight, pawn takes, rook takes bishop. Um, and even if knight c4, there's knight takes c4, and white will hit the bishop again. However, after rook e b1, black has f6. Hits the knight, and once this knight moves away, the c4 square is free for the knight to jump into. Basically forces white to play rook takes b2, and after f takes e5, arguably, black's got a much better position, because this d-pawn is pinned by the queen. So after knight takes b2, Leela actually played rook a to b1. This allows the knight to move back to a4, which is what happened in the game. And Leela continued with c4. Again, the b-pawn is pinned, so black can't take this pawn off. And actually, white's got a good space advantage. At the expense of two pawns, though. So it's getting very interesting. Scorpion played queen to d6 in the game. But now Leela gets on with her attack and plays knight to g4. Point being is now the queen is protected and can jump into h6 at any moment. This looks really dodgy, I thought f5 may have been a move, attacking the bishop and the knight, 
but actually the tactics work in white's favour. They can play c5, attack the queen, and once the queen retreats backwards, now play queen h6, once king h8 is played, play knight to e5, and if black takes the bishop, there's knight takes g6, we check, king g8, and white can play rook takes e4. Preparing rook to g4, and I've just highlighted the bishop, knight, and rook for black here. The, they're pretty much dead pieces. Knights on the rim are dim, and that bishop is just completely blocked in. So black's actually got a terrible position. Uh, so after knight g4, instead of playing f5, scorpion retreated the king backwards. Allows knight to h6 check though, and the king goes back again. And rook to b3. So Leela is just getting all her pieces into the attack. A rook lift. They're going to move the rook to either g3 or f3. And we'll have the bishop, the knight, and the queen, and the rook all in attack. That's four attackers versus zero defenders. So okay, scorpion defends with one piece. Rook to f8 protects the f7 square. And Leela continues her attack with knight to g4. Again, prepping this queen h6 move. And again, if f5 again. Again, this c5 move just wins for white because queen c7, queen h6, check. King h8 and knight e5. Threatening knight takes g6. In this position though, rook f6 is possible to protect the pawn. But again, just rook g3. And if rook g8, there's just bishop goes back to c2. Again, white's still two pawns down but has a much better uh, attacking position. I could even take the knight on a4 at some point if they wished. I doubt Lila would ever do that though. So again, after knight g4, the king actually retreated back to h8, and Lila got her piece into the game, rook g3, as we expected. Now, Scorpion played a nice move, knight c5, trying to trade the knight for the bishop. Again, this d-pawn is pinned by the queen, so we can't take the knight. But Lila just retreats the bishop back to b1. There was knight to e6. So at least now Scorpion has maybe two pieces in the defence to aid the king. Will this be enough though? Lila continues her attack, knight to e5. Now I did look at what happens if Scorpion again took another pawn, because this looks quite tempting with queen takes d4. Because if white's trade queens here, black's just three pawns up, and that's insurmountable. However, White can play this move, queen h6, I, and now you've got three pieces hitting this g6 square. Uh, for instance, after queen f4, trying to trade queens again, white could play rook takes g6, um, and both pawn, the, the h pawn is pinned, and if the f pawn takes, then knight takes g6 can be played with check, winning the queen. So after rook takes g6, it makes sense for black to trade queens, but even so in this position, this looks very good because we're attacking this h7 pawn. So back to the game, instead of taking on d4, Scorpion just went backwards again, king g7. Um, so basically black's just going back and forth with the king and this doesn't seem correct. And Leela gets another piece into the attack, rook e4 now. Preparing another rook lift, we've moved like rook to h4. And that's how many, one, two, three, four, five pieces in the attack. And one, two, maybe three pieces in the defense. Again, this bishop is terrible. And so this is why white is allowed to do this. For instance, let's say black just played a normal move like rook a to d8. White can play rook h4. And the queen is just coming in to h6. And this is an incredibly attacking game for white. So after rook e4 though, knight takes d4 was played instead of queen takes d4. Um, and yeah, black just gives up material because white's going to come crashing through eventually. So black gives back a whole piece. There's queen takes d4, queen takes, rook takes. The rook comes to d8, the rook comes to d3. There's a trade of rooks, and a5 is played. So after the smoke's cleared, after that amazing attack, what's going on? So black's got three pawns for the knight, basically. Um, and with an engine like Leela, she should be able to win this game. So let's see how she does it. First off, she plays c5, not allowing this uh, c pawn to ever move. This bishop is continuously blocked in. A nice move. We've seen previous games, though, where computers have double pass pawns. These are quite very strong, so it's interesting to see how Leela deals with this. Um, Scorpion plays f6, hits the knight, but Leela just ignores this with rook to d7. And this is the point. After f takes e5, 
Lila wins one pawn back with rook takes e7 check. The king comes to f6 and rook takes b7. So now black's only two pawns up, but white has an extra bishop. Scorpion tries to promote these pawns with a4, but now comes rook b6, winning another pawn basically. Go for king e6, bishop a2 with check, king d7, rook b7 check, king c8, white takes another pawn, rook takes h7, and now comes b4. And this is very clever actually how Leela deals with this. So this is good endgame technique for you all to see. Uh, just look how she deals with this now. She plays rook h8 check, king b7, trades the pair of rooks, and it looks like, hold on, how is white going to deal with these two pawns advancing? Uh, well, she does it very cleverly. She just plays bishop c4. Point being is if uh, a3 is played, the bishop just covers both these squares. Uh, so in the game, Scorpion played b3, but now comes just h4. Um, and if, for instance, black plays b2, white can just play bishop a2 at any point, and we'll just cover the squares this way. So that's great technique. In the game, actually, Scorpion played king a7. There was g4, e4, h5, uh, takes, takes. And finally, Scorpion does play b2. Uh, again, this allows Lila just to play bishop to a2. There's a3, and eventually... Black gives up, gets a knight, um, but Lila ignores this, gets a queen, and eventually mates Black in a few more moves. So after e3 takes, knight c4, there was bishop b3, checkmate, and Lila's won an incredibly nice game. So Lila just sacrificed loads of pawns to get an amazing attack, and eventually Scorpion had to give back the material in the form of a knight, and eventually that endgame was just uh, smooth sailing for Lila. Uh, with no problem at all in that endgame technique. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the analysis of this game. I'll drop the link in the description for you to check out the games in the Season 17 Premier Division, and hopefully I'll see you again soon for another chess video.